Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. My name is Shredder and this is my zoo. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been much requested in the comment section and that's a tour of the zoo. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be showing you around everything we've built right from the beginning of the series up until the most recent episodes. Now I did one of these on episode 51 and uh, we're now in our 70s somewhere in the episode number so there's been quite a few uh, buildings been built since then. So I thought, yep, it's definitely about time to have another tour. So we're going to start off with the entrance to the zoo. Now I'll give you a little bit of a history uh, of the uh, the zoo as we go around and uh, explain about how things were built, if, if I can remember this far back. So this series started back in May 2016, May last year. And uh, we've been going a long, long time. Now when it started, this was a Gaming Evolved season two so if you've been following any of the gaming evolved members uh, you, you probably know that we are now on uh, currently running series four so this started out as gaming evolved series two it started out as a basic survival series um and it wasn't until about episode six or so that i started work on this which was going to be the zoo entrance and it was also my base at the time as well um, so yeah, this to begin with, uh, we had no mods on the server. Uh, this was all kind of built out of vanilla structures, uh, nothing modded at all. I think uh, during this build, we added in a sort of no clip um, structure to uh, to help with some of the uh, the extra bits. I think things like going down into the uh, the ground. I think I've done it around here. Yeah, so things like this. I, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you can see it's, I've still never got around to it. So some of these things you couldn't place because of the uh, the no clip. So I think. That's basically what we happened here. So in this area, you have the ground entrance. We also we also have this, which I've not really done much to. This is supposed to be a parking lot for um, visitors to come park their dinos in. This was built on the live stream that I did a while back. Someone was desperate for me to build one, so I quickly shoved this down. Um, it could probably do with a little bit of love and a bit, a bit of work on. So uh, we, we could do that later on. But yeah, this is the entrance. This sign here was uh, painted by Dreyarch, who's another or one of the original members of Gaming Evolved. And he gave that to me, so that's that's nice. So yeah, this is the grand entrance. Um, we'll shut the doors behind us, make sure nothing comes in. It's still kind of a little bit... And, oh, pumpkin! That's where you are! I haven't had seen you for ages! My one and only little monkey. Well, well, we'll take you with us as well. So yeah, this is the um, the, uh, the entrance to the zoo. Up here we have um, stairs up to where my base is. We'll show you that in a moment. This is the ground floor where visitors will come in. Um, this uh, ideally what I was planning on doing is making this into a little gift shop if I can find the decorative items to make it and then the zoo actually comes out this way again this is just a kind of an empty room really again we could, we could decorate this at some point and this comes out into a little sort of lot where we've got um, toilets over here a little toilet block uh, you can see we have a, we have a disabled uh, toilet we have uh, men a couple of women's stalls and uh, some signs uh, that sort of thing and inside uh, I, I haven't oh god I'm stuck uh, no I'm not I uh, haven't actually finished the uh, the structures yet really because these toilets should be facing the other way I never did get around to fixing that unfortunately but uh, that's that let's just shut that door behind us so anyway let's carry on into here because there's something else I want to show uh, so this here is my wall of patreons it's a little bit empty at the moment but actually I do have another sign I need to put up there so basically one of the rewards of becoming a patron of mine is that you will have a sign with your name on in the visitors area here. And that one. So if we can actually, can we do this? Hopefully that's the right ones. I've turned my HUD off. Uh, so the only um, other one we have is uh, Tagback TV, who's been a patron for a little while. And I keep forgetting to put his sign up there. So that is... There we go. So unfortunately, I was hoping it was going to be a bit more of an incentive, but um, it's a little bit small. You can't really see the names. But if you become a Patreon, you will get your name up on the sign on this wall here. And there are other rewards as well. I need to kind of sort that out. I haven't really done too much to the Patreon. But anyway, let's carry on with the tour. So upstairs, this is where my base was. This, uh, I never use this anymore because this is now a creative series, obviously. Um, so we have uh, massive amounts of storage. I think I've got loads of stuff in here, actually. Oh, there's some building materials. I think I've got, uh, oh yeah, the, all the cementing paste and dyes and stuff. All the cementing paste you'll ever need, really. So there's more storage. We have crafting things over here. Uh, that's kind of as far as I ever got. Um, and up here, oh yeah, we have a little bedroom inside here. This is uh, where I sleep. And um, upside, up this ladder, we have another level of the base. So we have, again, this is my kind of uh, refrigeration. Have we even got anything left in here? Because it's... Oh, we've still got some eggs in there. What's that? 
fertilized carnage egg. Yeah, we don't need any more carnage. We've got so many. This was the garden. Obviously, I don't need it anymore, so it's kind of uh, all failed and died. I think we have... Uh, well, we've got fertilizer in there if we ever need it, but... Um, yeah, that's this. So this one leads out to the, 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 uh, the zoo over here. We'll get to that later. This one was my parking bay for my flyers. I think my Quetzal that I had here died, which is quite upsetting because that was uh, carried over right from my first ever series of arc. But um, never mind, we don't really need it anymore. So we'll go back down and we'll carry on uh, into the main part of the zoo. We'll follow the route that visitors will take. And as we're going along here, if you find yourself liking the video, please do leave a like. But also in the comment section, stick down what your favourite enclosure is. So have a look around and, and see what it is you like. So as I say, we've got the toilets here. Now this uh, was kind of a holding pen for dinos that don't have enclosures. So at the moment we've only got the two that we've got but don't have enclosures. We've got the uh, the dippy there and we've got the thorny dragon. Um, and uh, also, in case you're wondering, um, I'm going to be doing another episode tomorrow. Uh, sure zoo, where we will be building an enclosure, not just uh, doing the tour. And I'll do all the naming, you know, I name my dinos after subscribers. We'll do that tomorrow, so come back uh, later for that. So first of all, we have the petting zoo. Uh, so this is one of the first enclosures that I built. And uh, I, this, on here we have the Pachycephalosaurus, we have the Lysosaurus and uh, the Dodos uh, in here. And we have... Um, nice kind of benches around this tree this is a natural tree so obviously uh, when I started this it was all built in survival uh, without any mods at all um, I have you know since I've added extra things later on but we'll, we'll get into that later on so this is the um, the petting zoo and so as you come around here you've petted the animals and you've had a bit of fun and you can come out this way and of course you need to wash your hands so please wash your hands after handling the animals we have a little hand washing station here and there should be, unless I'm mistaken, it. yep, we have some soap in there as well. So that's pretty cool. So that was the first thing that I built. Now I think, I can't remember the exact order now, I'd have to go back and look at my playlist. But I think the next thing I built was the Dilo House. So this is one of the, the, um, the, the first kind of dedicated enclosures. It was done over two episodes, I think. Originally it was just this inside building. And then someone said that I should uh, extend it and, and have an outdoor, outdoor area. So that's what I did, built this here. Um, so as you can see, these are all kind of vanilla structures. There's no decorative stuff uh, like I do in my current videos. It's all pretty empty. So um, definitely at some point in the future, we could probably come back to all these old um, enclosures and really decorate them out, stick in loads of plants and that sort of stuff like I do now. Um, either that or we could just um, leave it how it is and we'll do a brand new series, Shredder Zoo uh, Series 2, at some point in the far future. Uh, but yeah, but that's the, uh, the Dino House. And next up we have, this one I think was the next one I built, uh, one of my most popular videos I think actually in, in the Shredder Zoo series, um, in terms of views, it's also one of the oldest, <laughs> it's obviously it's a very early one, but that's the Carnos. So uh, around here we have the Carno enclosure, comes all the way around, we have benches to sit, lots of uh, windows you can have a look out and to lost the rest of the zoo. And, and of course in a lot of the, the exhibits I have these information signs about who named them, um, where they're found, uh, how big they are, what they ate, and what time period they came from, that sort of thing. I've been a bit slack uh, recently, and I know a lot of the more recent ex exhibits don't have those, and that's something I really should get onto at some point in the future, making sure that every exhibit has these uh, uh, information signs. That's the whole point of this uh, series, really, was to be a little bit educational about the dinosaurs, a bit of a paleontology series, that sort of thing. So there we go. So we've got the glass up the front here, so you can just look in. And again, this is greenhouse glasses before Structures Plus and all that sort of stuff, so we have these glass in. So, I mean, all these enclosures could be improved with the current mods that we have in, in, in store. Um, so while we're over this way, I'll show these things up here. Um, so here we have, uh, this is uh, what I call the birthing center. Again, it's kind of an extension onto the base, but this one here was where visitors could come and see um, if anything needs to be hatched out. Um, we've got the air conditioners in here. I don't know how this is still running. It hasn't had gas in it for months, but everything appears to be running still. Kind of crazy. What have we got in here? I think we've got gas in it. Is it still running? It doesn't look like there is. No, it is completely empty. Not that I need it anymore. Uh, but there is a little viewing platform. So this has come up here and they can watch the scientists at work catching out the dinos. That was the idea for this. Uh, we could definitely improve that with some of the um, new mods. I mean, the, you've got that tech mod, the e Ecos tech mod, which has all the the um, kind of the dinos in, in, in status in those uh, sort of birthing pods and things. That would be quite fun to do. But that's that one. 
this one here is completely died unfortunately this one's kind of uh, this was the bee house I had two giant bees one of which had was named um, it seems to have starved this needs to be replaced but in here we had loads of uh, beehives this was full of beehives and we had a couple of bees flying around in here as well so this is uh, definitely something that needs to be uh, fixed up at some point as well we're not doing that today but at some point in the future we should fix that up uh, but you can see that this is um, a more recent one because this is using the structures plus stuff um, so but, uh, let's go back to this one over here this was built in vanilla and this is a little restaurant, a little cafe. So we have the tables outside and inside here we have uh, some more tables you can sit inside if the weather's bad. And we have the kitchen in here. So we, again we have refrigeration, we have cooking and things like that. Now I believe, do we still have them? We have still got some in here. Amazing. We still got another 10 dodo burgers in here. This was a custom recipe uh, which I made up. I think we should actually have the recipe in here. Um, does, do we, can we see what it is? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, cooked meat and dodo eggs, that's basically what it is. Um, so yeah, dodo burgers. Now the intention was to make a whole load more of those, but again, it's just one of those things that I just never got around to doing. Uh, loads of custom recipes, I was going to have uh, shredder shakes and all this kind of stuff. So okay, so let's not get too far out this way, let's go back. Uh, where can we go? Well, I guess we could do the back row here. Let's go to the bug house. Now this one. Um, it's called the bug house, a little bit inaccurate because they're not all bugs that are in there. It needs to be renamed. In actual fact, I am planning on completely rebuilding this entire uh, house because uh, I think I can do a much better job of it. And um, you know, there's there's other creatures that need to be added. And this was never really finished off. So um, it's kind of a little bit of a shame. But Dun Beetles were the first one in here. Now you can see um, the, the original idea back when I had dinos on wandering. So these would actually wander around. And every now and again they would crawl up here and they'd crawl across the top here. Which was the idea. If we actually go through, let's go through the um, the tunnel itself. So this was a kind of a tunnel of terror. So you have the kind of things that people are traditionally scared of. Bugs, uh, we've got scorpions and, and um, spiders and things. So you go through this tunnel and you can look at their exhibits either side. And they would be wandering around, crawling over the top of you. The idea was a bit like a, you know the shark tunnel you get in the uh, sea life centers. Um, that was the idea behind this, uh, this, uh, this building. But I definitely think I can improve it. It's not built particularly well. Uh, so I think this is going to be a, a project done soon maybe even I may do this next weekend make make, make a start on the a new uh, bug house but it's not going to be just bugs arthropod house might be a slightly more accurate uh, term um, for most parts but yes yeah, so we have the uh, the scorpions in here and then further down here so this is one of the reasons why I want to rebuild it is uh, the, the transition from foundations to ceilings you kind of have to crawl down because you you, you can't fit through without crouching okay being here we have the spiders uh, there's nothing on this side and uh, further through here this is why I want to do this one because it's never been finished we have um, we do have one snake who's kind of disappearing through the floor this one was um, actually spawned in in the live stream this was before you could actually tame them and I think if I do this oh it is named so sometimes that name gets reset this has been named after you know, someone's requested a name um, and sometimes it seems to get reset sometimes but um, yeah, so we can definitely work on this one. There's definitely a few more arthropods that we can fit in here. Um, there's also things like snails, which is a gastropod, not an arthropod. And we also have snakes and things. We may put them in a separate house. I don't know. We'll, we'll plan that out next weekend, maybe. Or maybe, uh, depending on what I actually want to do. But anyway, that's the uh, the back house. Uh, we'll come back up this way, I think, because there's another one over here. This is uh, the Dimorphodon display area. So we have a whole seating array here, so you can actually sit down and you've got a little area here. So like the birds of prey displays that a lot of zoos have, um, this one is for the Dimorphodons. So the Dimorphodons, when they're not on display, they live in this little hut in here. We have uh, four Dimorphodons there. So um, that was uh, one quite a nice little idea. Uh, a lot of the ideas I have are obviously a slightly role play. You know, you can't really do a, do a Dimorphodon display. And there's no one to display to. I'm the only person who plays on this server. This is my own personal server now transferred over from uh, season two of gaming evolved through to mine uh, my own server so um, yeah um, anyway next up we have the parasitherium uh, this one was um, I quite like this enclosure actually it goes all the way up and um, over here this is kind of where you can stand here and if he comes over you can kind of feed him 
Um, I've done this in a couple of uh, enclosures where you have little feeding stations where, because like, you get this from um, giraffes, uh, lots of giraffes and elephants, you can kind of queue up and maybe sometimes you have to pay extra or something, but you can actually get the chance to feed the animals. And that's something that I built this little platform for to do. But you can also go all the way around. And uh, there's something not quite right. I need to uh, rebuild this here. There was... I take, oh, I never actually did rebuild it. There was a big old gate here. Um, so this bit actually needs to be rebuilt slightly because uh, you can actually walk up over this, I think. Possibly. Um, so we could probably easily quite escape. But um, I don't know. I, I did kind of fix this up. with by, This wasn't here This this originally. Um, and there was a gate here. But uh, I thought yeah, the visitors could actually get into the enclosure. Not too safe. So uh, we built this kind of fence. But yeah, you can get right up close to him. Have a, have a eat a leaf or something like that um, and then down here we have a little information center yeah I do have the information signs on this one little kind of shelter you can see and you can get right up close and get a really good view of his enclosure from here but again you can see it's built before structures plus this is all the other stuff um, and we can come out this side here so that's that one. so let's see let's move over to should we go around yeah we'll, we'll stick to this one over here so this is the stego enclosure so we've got two stegos here. We have the information uh, signs on this one as well. And um, you can actually come down this side. And there's some benches you can take a seat and just look out and just watch them for a little bit. And let's go, let's not go too far that way. We'll go back this way a little bit because we're missing out this one here. So we have the Pachyrhinosaurus. Uh, he's over here. We've only got the one. I think I should probably add in another one at least at some point because uh, it's on his own. There's a big enough enclosure really. Uh, we can do that. So, uh, But this one is also attached up to the, the Triceratops one. We can actually climb up this ladder and um, you've got, yeah, you can come over here uh, and actually there's an upper floor to this level as well so you can kind of look down over the whole thing, get a good view around of the zoo. You can see the other enclosures around. Uh, there's so many, so many buildings around here. It's really taken shape over the past year and a half-ish, really. Um, yeah, so let's have a, go, a closer look at the trikes. So that's over this way. Uh, you can come through this point here. And again, we have information signs. You can see the three trikes down here, get a good old view. And there's actually two ways uh, down. You can go down the other side as well. I can actually reach the ladder. Hello. Oh, there we go. So we can come down. And also, um, I think this bit, I can't remember whether this was the staff only. I haven't put any doors on here, but the staff can come back, feed the trikes and the, the, um, the trough there, attend to them if they need to. You can get right up close to the, uh, the trikes. That's really nice. So that's that one. Let's go uh, back around the other way. We'll see what else we've got around over here. So we go down here. Yep, so next up we have uh, the Dodecurus. Um so this one, originally, we had the beavers in here as well. This was a double enclosure. Um, let's see if, well, actually, let me just get in the enclosure if I can. Here we go. So this was a beaver house. So the beavers were here, but if you've seen uh, fairly recently, a couple of episodes ago, I moved them down by the lake. And uh, this is, I'm going to tear this down and rebuild this into a new enclosure. And we'll separate the, um, the Dodecurus. Uh, we'll stick this, we can get it to move over this way a little bit. I believe we're there for now. Uh, we'll enclose off uh, this little bit for her. Uh, this one, if you saw the last one, this is Katia Craft 3. I just um, named Katia Craft 5. Every series, I've had at least one Katia Craft. Um, <laughs> totally curious. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll build something else here. We'll put a new animal in this this thing. This I'll do that soon as well. And we'll uh, we'll put a fence going across. Maybe even a pathway for the visitors to go through as well. I think it might be a good thing to do. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that, this was the beavers enclosure. You can have a closer look inside the uh, Dirty Curious enclosure if you like. Actually, we didn't have a look. Yes, yeah, so I put in this little ramp here for people to, uh, sorry, for uh, the Dirty Curious to roll down because they like rolling around. So this was that little shelter. But as you can see, the, these were obviously built way before I added in any of the decorative mods. So there's not a lot of decorations going on in these early enclosures because um, I didn't have anything to decorate with them with, basically. That's why I added in things like Structures Plus and uh, the Eco's decorative, uh, decorative mods um, later on. That's something I really wanted to do. Okay, well, here we go. Here's one we can have a look at. Built onto the, the back side of the Stegosaur enclosure, we have the Megaloceros. 
Uh, so we've got a couple in here. We did have a female in here as well, but I think she, she maybe she starved a long time ago. So this was as far as the decorative could go. It was a big hay bale for them to eat, uh, just built out of thatch walls and things. That's what that's all that is. Um, and yeah, so you can actually look into into it from the uh, I think uh, the, was it the there's one enclosure up there that you can look in. Um, I think that's the Paki Rhino enclosure over there. Am I right in thinking that? I'm getting lost in my own zoo. Yes, it is. That's the trike enclosure. Paki Rhino. You can actually look down uh, into this this area from up there. And uh, yeah, so it's just a kind of little small enclosure for them, kind of tucked away behind the Stego enclosure. You can see the Stego in there. So but anyway, we've got these two guys in here. Close those away. So let's go over. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one now. So this is the raptor enclosure. This was kind of obviously based on the uh, raptor hatchery from the Jurassic Park, the first film. Um, it's kind of roughly based on their design here. Um, you can sort of see that in the in the film. Um, so this is where they they drop in the cow and the. Uh, the raptors will feed on the, the cow, wherever it is. We've got a little tower that you can actually climb up. You can get um, down it as well, so you can get to it from down below. And you can actually climb up here and get a good view of around the zoo. You can sort of see all the all the structures and things around. And you can get a good view down of the raptors in there as well. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with this one. It was a quite a popular video at the time as well. Pretty nice. Let's try and get out if we can. Uh, let's carry on. Yeah, we'll carry on over this way. So next up we have the saber tooth. So I've got a couple of saber tooths in here, and uh, we've got little windows around so they can actually you can get right up close, and um, they will walk around in here. You can have a good view. We can go inside, and we have the information about them as well, and uh, you can look through the windows at them. I should probably actually I should probably take off their saddles, make it look a little bit more zoo-like, more realistic. I should really do that at some point as well. Uh, close that door. And yeah, so that goes all the way around here. You can kind of walk around and then I've got these gates in so we can get them in and out. Back when it was a survival series and I might actually need to use uh, animals like this. So you can actually sit down and have a look through the windows. Pretty nice. Um, right, let's move on. Let's do, uh, we've got this one here now. The uh, parasaur enclosure. There's a couple of parasaurs in there. And uh, we did have a bit of a disaster one time with a wild Therizino came in and destroyed half of this enclosure and killed one of my uh, parasaurs. Um, but uh, we shouldn't have problems with that anymore. But yes, yeah, so there's a couple in there. Um, as I say, again, this is all vanilla stuff. Um, didn't have had any. Did, I, oh God, I can't speak. I didn't add any more uh, mods in at this point. Uh, we're getting closer to uh, where mods are, but um, not quite yet. All right, let's go this way. We have an observation tower. Um, so this one is uh, also it was just kind of a little visitor center. I think I was planning on putting in various information signs and things, but I don't really think I've got anything I need to put in here. But we have a little tower. You can kind of go up. There's still sort of seats where you can rest and just uh, sit down, and have a have a snack. And then from this point onwards, we have um, viewing platforms where you can look out over the other things. Really good view of the thylacal ear right there. And the Parasotherium. That's one of the reasons why I got rid of the huge gate because from this point you couldn't actually see the Parasotherium uh, from this point. So I got rid of the big, big old gate that was there. So yeah, another floor, another observation floor, and then we reach the top here. So again, I could, if I replace this with uh, Structures Plus Glass, we could get a much better viewing platform. You can actually see a lot better. We can get rid of a lot of these bars and have bigger open windows, but really quite nice. And there we go. So uh, if you're still with me at this point in the video, thanks for sticking with it. Um, there are quite a lot of enclosures to get through. This could be quite a long video. Uh, but um, that's what people wanted to see. It was a tour of everything that was built. So I'm very happy to continue uh, and do this. Right, so we have the Thylacal Ear exhibit. Now, because they're known for climbing and stuff, I wanted um, some high up uh, pieces. This was, um, I have rebuilt this one because originally when I built it, it was before Structures Plus and it was built all out of vanilla, vanilla uh, stuff and I, I wasn't happy with it because it just looked a complete and utter mess. So I have since come back and just kind of rebuilt this thing. So it's still not, I don't think it's still a brilliant one, but um, in actual fact, it's not very really easy to see down here. Let me fly up a little bit. Here we go. We can actually have a, a look from the air. So there's two thylacal ears in here. They've got a little sort of hut and shelter over here where they can get fed. And uh, they've got these kind of catwalks, well, these aren't catwalks, but um, 
I did have some catwalks in before, but yeah, so they can kind of walk around up high. Because uh, I've seen you know, a lot of um, sort of cat things. I think I think I'd been to uh, Colchester Zoo. I think it was that, or was it Africa Alive? Was there was some some zoo I went to where they had um, a snow leopard, which had uh, very similar to this. It had um, a big rock in there, and they could climb up on top of the rock and stuff. So that was a kind of inspiration for that one. That's fine. So let's go. We'll go over this way. I'll come back down. And I'll carry on walking because it's a little bit faster to walk than to fly. Uh, oh, oh no! I've just hit the wrong one. I've just hit ghost. There we go. I'm walking now. Good, good. Right. So this one um, was an enclosure uh, built for uh, several uh, dinos. We have the moss chops down there, and we have the procopterans, and there's an ovus in there as well. Um, so you can kind of walk through, get right up close. Now this was kind of again inspired by Real Life Zoo where there was like a, an Australian exhibit where they had kangaroos and goats and chickens and things and you just walk through and they were kind of free to walk across the path and you would, you could uh, buy little cups of food and feed the goats. Um, and uh, yeah, that was kind of the inspiration. And this is where I kind of, sort of discovered the paint gun and I started painting things. Um, I painted. I wanted the natural grass, but I couldn't get the building to look right. Um, again, this was before Structures Plus. I think this is pretty much all vanilla building, I think. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so it's not Structures Plus, this one. So I had to build them a floor, and I didn't like it. And um, so we painted it green to make it look like grass, that sort of thing. We could definitely come back and maybe improve that and get rid of that stuff and actually build into the ground now that we have Structures Plus. We, that's something we could do. Uh, so I don't think there's any enclosures out this way. Um, no, you got, you're on the um, Parasotherium. You can see here this was uh, this is kind of the sort of thing that could be cleared up. You could add in walls with, with the Structures Plus that will actually cover up this kind of mess, which I couldn't do this before because um, they it, they just wouldn't uh, it wouldn't work. But uh, yeah, that's that one. So let's come on over here. We have attached onto the back here. We have the Iguanodon exhibit. Uh, one of my favourite dinosaurs is the, the Iguanodon. Was, uh, even when I was a kid, I used to love this dinosaur. Um, and I did try and attempt to do a little bit of decoration. Again, this is before Eco's mods. Um, it's all since died now, but I did plant some things in here to kind of give it a little bit of vegetation because I just thought it looked a bit bare. Um, but uh, that's all kind of died because you, you kind of need to you know, have a lot of upkeep with that sort of stuff. And you can see I've got the, uh, the water there to kind of keep them irrigated and stuff, but... Again, that's something that we can improve later on. And uh, we can have a look around. So let's go over to... There's a couple of exhibits over here I want to show you. This is the Parasaur. So you can get another look at the Parasaurs. Hello. Um, this one we've seen, that's the Sabre, Sabre Tooth Cat. This one here, the Dire Bear. Now, I was quite a big fan of this enclosure um, because I managed to incorporate this tree and there's some rocks here uh, as a natural feature. These are natural, not added on through any mods. Um, again, this was still before I added mods on. Um, but inside here, I thought it was really quite a nice enclosure. So we have a close look inside. Uh, so we have a little thing up here. They can climb up and just sort of sit up here, and or well, they can just come down. And you know, this, I thought yeah, it's quite. I was quite a big fan of this one when I first built it. Hello, nice bear. There's another one. You can say hello. Hello. <laughs> I love the bears. The bears are great. Uh, yeah, so that's that one, and I think we've got one more before we started adding mods. Can I actually get to it from this side? That's the this one here, the Ankylosaur exhibit. So you can look at the Ankylosaurs here. Again, I incorporated in all these natural rocks that were here, and just enclosed them all off to give it. Um, again, you know, this was before I, we had Eco's mods and things, so I tried to use the natural landscape as much as possible uh, to kind of uh, give it a, a much more detailed look and stuff. And again, I think this was the exhibit when I discovered the paint gun and just went crazy with the paints and colours and things like that. So we have two here. Um, this this one here is one of the most beautiful um, Ankies I've ever seen. I still have a feeling this was given to me back when I was in my first ever ARC series and I kind of transferred it over from that series into this one. Um, I still have a feeling that this may be a, like a custom paint job because I've never seen one that looked that brightly coloured. And then, of course, this was way before colour mutations and things like that. So this is a, it's either a natural colour that I've never seen before, never seen anything look as good as this, or it's been painted and um, by whoever it was who gave me who gave me that one. So yeah, that's uh, that's this one. You can see the uh, the inside here. 
and the visitors can come right up here and uh, actually get really up close and personal with the, with the animals, which is what I like. It's one of my favourite parts of the zoos is when you go into the enclosures and you can get really close to the animals and maybe even touch them, that sort of thing. So I believe that's all the enclosures we have that um, were built before I added in Structures Plus and Ecos Mods. This was the first one that was built in and uh, you saw at the beginning of the, uh, the episode I added in Tadback TV as my Patreon. This one um, I invited him onto the server. He's an awesome builder and uh, he actually came in and he built this for me. Oh, I helped him out a little bit but he did most of the building here. Uh, so we have the Tanaka Theoriums in this part. And uh, so we have the Ecos mods in this one because we've added in um, some snowy rocks and plants and things like that. Um, it looks pretty awesome, this one. We'll have a, a good look at uh, the inside in a moment. And over the other side, we have the direwolves. Obviously, this is staff only. Uh, you mustn't uh, go into it as the um, uh, as visitors. It'd be very dangerous. You might get bitten. I mean, we have very well-trained animals here at the zoo. They are very well-trained and they... They are very, you know, well fed and stuff, so they they don't want to eat the visitors too much. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, this one. Um, pretty, ha I was really happy with this one. This this is uh, what it inspired Tag to make his own zoo series. If you check out his channel, he's actually doing a mutation zoo, so he's uh, mutating animals and he's building them a zoo as he goes along. It's a really good series. Definitely check it out. But um, when he he came here and he built this for me, it really inspired him to kind of do his own zoo. So. Um, uh, that's uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Really happy for him for for doing that one, and of course he's he's what's inspired me for doing my Ragnarok series. If you've watched that one, where I uh, mutate and breed everything, that's the kind of thing that he does in, in his uh, series, and I was really inspired by that. I wanted to do that myself in Ragnarok. So we have the tables, we have food, this little restaurant area here, really kind of decorative with the little flags and things like that. And uh, yeah, we have like this kind of. Uh, the kitchen area here so you can kind of come up here have your lunch and look out at the the exhibits here uh, we also have the kentrasaur exhibit which i attached on in a later episode uh, looks pretty awesome there and let's see where can we go down can we can't get out from here can we no we have to go back this way go back down here and let's go we'll go up this way i think would be a good way to go because we have some much more recent ones. These were done in um, more recent episodes. Uh, some of my favourite enclosures that I've built myself. Um, really, really happy with this one. We have the Uteranus over here. Uh, really, really good. We can get um, in close and we can go up this way. You can go through here and you can get into a viewing area right in the middle of that enclosure. A uh, little kind of, um, I don't know, it could be pretty scary. I just know there's something about these animals that looks so imposing when you're walking around them and they're just walking around and, and stuff. So you can get really up close if you're brave enough to come in here and, and have them walk right up to you. A bit like a shark cage, you know, you can go in and have them come up right up to the bars. And we've also got another viewing area. We can go further up this way. Oh, I've got to get a little bit stuck on these stairs sometimes. See, so you can go up here. Another viewing area. You can get a view over the, there if they happen to walk it around at this point. Uh, much much higher viewing area and yeah so it's all made out of glass this is obviously structures plus and the eco's decorative mods with the trees and everything uh really make, makes such a huge difference to the enclosures when you're able to kind of decorate them and that sort of thing but we should have two uteranus in this enclosure oh yeah there's the other one hiding under the tree there uh yeah so you can look up in here another viewing area and uh I th yeah i was really happy with how this one turned out uh, and then the very episode after that one, I uh, included another one over this side for the Therizino. It's a very similar kind of enclosure. Um, we've got two Therizinos in here. Uh, some of these rocks are natural. I kind of incorporated it into, but I added in a few from my own trees and that sort of thing. Um, looks pretty good. Some of these trees were knocked down as they were wandering around. They, they kind of harvest. I forgot about that. But uh, for most of the part, you can't have them wandering around because they glitch out through the uh, the walls and things and you end up losing them uh, but yeah so there's another area here and because these are herbivores we've got another feeding station so if you're brave enough to come up here you can uh, feed them with specially formulated uh, therizino food which is sold to you by the uh, zookeepers who i could probably actually add some of the um structures plus farmer thing people so as, as staff members maybe that is something i should uh, think about doing but yeah, so that's those ones. So I'm really happy with these two enclosures. Really nice building. Really happy with that. 
So, uh, yep, this is the back end of the uh, the Kentro. You can come through here and look into that little house. We've actually got little windows you can look in as well. But you shouldn't, they should be locked, really, I think. The visitors shouldn't really be able to stick their hands in. They might get spiked. Uh, yeah, so we've still got some space over this point um, for more exhibits. But I think we've seen all these ones. I think it's time to go... We'll go down here. Yeah, we'll come this way. And we'll look at the, the mammoths and the woolly rhinos that we have down here. And then we'll make our way back up this path here and uh, see what else we've got. So uh, we've still got plenty of enclosures to look at. Hopefully you're still enjoying. You're still, you're still with me. So here we go. This is the uh, mammoth enclosure. Again, I went crazy with a paint gun painting this to make it look a little bit uh, more varied and a bit more colourful sort of thing. Oh my god. You shouldn't be there. There we go. Sorted. <laughs> you weren't a paying guest. I don't see your ticket. You haven't got your armband on. That's what happens to people who don't pay getting in here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this is the mammoth enclosure and it looks quite nice. Now again, yeah, this is one I should have some information signs, but I don't think I ever did. I've been very lax with the information. Definitely something I need to do in the future. So I've got a couple of mammoths down here, all the kind of snowy rocks and trees and things for um, uh, the Ecos mods. And then we have a couple of rhinos over here getting right up close. You can uh, give them a little pat. Try not to get spiked. But yes, yeah, so let's have a quick fly up so we can see this from above. Looks quite nice, I think. With some uh, snowy, all the snowy plants and rocks. And they've got their own little enclosure uh, over there, a little sort of shelter. And another one um, over here for the mammoths. Oh, yeah, if you we haven't actually built much over this way. But if you come over around here as a visitor, we'll probably should build some kind of path. And we can have more exhibits over this way in the future as well. But we have this little thing here. We just uh, drop down and walk. So inside here... What? Are you, what? What? Another unpaying guest? You did not pay. I don't know what you're doing in here. <laughs> Why have I got raptors in here? That's a little bit concerning. Anyway, we have a little map of the island over here. And uh, we have some... Uh, uh, these aren't real, they're not real animals, they are, you know, um, animatronics. Uh, you know, no, no cruelty here at the zoo, unless you don't pay. Okay, and then, yeah, so a little viewing tower, you can have a look over the uh, the two uh, enclosures here. Looks really quite nice. Uh, with some benches you can sit. Is there any more raptors out here, is there? Mm, I'll have to watch out for them. Sneaky raptors, they don't like paying, they're trying to get in. So I haven't built uh, a wall around the outside. Right, okay, so we'll, we'll not go down to the lake just yet. We'll go back up uh, to the zoo and we'll uh, show us a couple more things up here. Um, yes, there's a couple of things up here I want to show you. So this one, again, this has kind of fallen into disrepair, disrepair because I haven't maintained it. Um, but this was uh, another one. I think I did have a go. I put a couple of bits of food on here. So another little picnic area. There's no nowhere to buy food here, but if you bring your own food, I have a little bit of a picnic. You can certainly do that. Again, I had some uh, flat, um, some um, plants growing in here, but they all kind of look the same. It wasn't that decorative. Uh, but again, I can come back down here with... Now I've got the Ecos mods on. I can always improve that a little bit. Okay, so let's go back up this way. Uh, this one, I was pretty proud with it. Took a lot of work. I remember, um, at this stage, uh, for this particular exhibit, um, I was still working in survival. Uh, so this was actually built... You know, I gathered the resources myself and it took a long, long time. But uh, yeah, this is the Avery. Oh, it's getting a little bit dark. Let me just make it a bit brighter. Go back to uh, midday so we can see. There we go. Nice, bright, sunny day. Um, yeah, so we have um, all our birds and flying things that you can ride on. The Argentavas over there. We have Pteranodons in this exhibit here. Some people said that these enclosures were a little bit small for them, and I guess that's probably right, but again, remember, I was doing all this in survival, so um, <laughs> you can believe how long it took to actually build this. Uh, it was kind of crazy, but I was very proud of it. Um, and this this area, you can see, I'm getting quite a few lockups here. <laughs> this 
with all this kind of glass and things, it was a real strain. I mean, there's been several optimization updates to Arc since I built this, and I have upgraded my computer with some extra memory. Um, but my computer used to scream when I came down here. And if I ever looked in this way, the frame rate would just the frame rate would drop dramatically, and my computer would start making loud screaming noises. Uh, it doesn't do that now, but you know we still get a few odd frame up, uh, frame lock up every now and again. But um, it's a lot of hard work, all this glass. So anyway, you know, Tobahara's there. We have the Pelagornis in there. And again, this I need to put some kind of a fence here because visitors should not be able to get in this close to see the um, uh, the, the Quetzal. Um, but yes, I have I need to put a gate in there. But anyway, that's the uh, that's the Avery. Um, I was pretty proud of myself for building this. It took a long, long time. And uh, again, it could be definitely improved by um, Structures Plus, but I don't think I want to tackle it too much. But not really. Uh, right. So we have. Um, so we go to the small animal house now. Yeah, we'll go to, since we're, since we're over this way, we'll go to my crowning glory. This is my favourite enclosure and one of the most recent ones. We saw last weekend. We finished this off last weekend. So let's just have a fly up and look at it from uh, the sky because it looks really, really good. I'm just blown away by that by this. It's, it's it was quite a few episodes worth in here but look at it it just looks amazing i'm so happy with how this this showed up um we'll, we'll go inside and we'll walk around like a visitor and we'll, we'll see what we've got inside uh walk and drop down so we have Vic the Ornis in here so you can actually get around to the outside and get a really good look at them uh, in this little enclosure and again we've got the ecos mods decorating it looks really nice in there um we have nice decorative things you can have sit down there's plenty of flowers and things and we have a pathway going all the way around this is what i'll be doing in the future episode is extending this pathway down there because we've got our lake exhibit down there which is where we'll go next and where we'll finish off this episode that's the last thing to look at down there i think um yeah so this pathway goes all the way around but we are interested in what's inside here oh again okay, another, another look up <laughs> again this is kind of taxing uh, some people are still amazed I'm able to run it. I'm, I'm getting pretty decent frame levels, even with so much building around here. It's not too bad. Honestly, it isn't too bad. So down here we have the compies. All the little compies in here. Uh, I do have my information signs. Who named them, what they eat, that, all that sort of stuff. Some of them, some of the, a lot of the exhibits have it. Um, but, uh, not all of them. We have a, a, a Hesperonis. This was going to go in the small animal house, but I decided this is going to go down the lake. I will do that in a future episode. So let's go up this way. Uh, we can have another look at the Ichthornis through here. And there is another exit. You can go out and exit the animal house that side. Um, or you can carry on and look at the rest of the exhibits in here. We have the Pegamastix and this point here. This whole house is kind of desert themed, which I know doesn't fit every dino. Not every dino in here uh, actually lived in the desert, but you got to pick a theme and stick with it. This isn't uh, particularly realistic, but um, it's fine. Uh, these are the Archaeopteryx. I think that's what they are, isn't it? I always get these confused with Microraptors. Um, yes, that's an Archaeopteryx. I thought it was. Um, yeah, so I do get them mixed up with the uh, the Microraptor sometimes. But yep, that's the Archaeopteryx and a nice little enclosure. And we've also got another kind of picnic area. You can um, hear, I don't think I've got, I haven't got a counter up here, no. So this was kind of a cafe thing, but I've got no counter. So if you have to bring your own lunch, I think, at the moment. So uh, we've seen those ones. Yes, yeah, so up here we have the vultures. They're in this area over here. We've got the little skeleton that they've been feasting on. Um, Nice big glass panel windows, done with the Structures Plus, looks pretty nice. And we have up here, we have Trudons. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know, a big old tree trunk in the middle there, kind of give it a foresty kind of area. Um, now yeah, obviously now I should have maybe done this in a dark environment because these are potentially um, nocturnal. But again, it's not intended to be a perfectly realistic representation of that habitat. I just, you know, have to do with, you know, work with what I've got, basically. So that's up here, right at the top of the thing. And you get a good view out here. We're going to be building some more enclosures. I think tomorrow, um, if you come back tomorrow, um, we'll be building an enclosure over this way. Uh, I think I'll put something in here, maybe. I haven't, haven't fully decided what I'm doing tomorrow, but we'll be building something anyway. 
Uh, right, so we've got one more thing in here. In, oops, I'm getting lost in my own enclosure here. We need to go down this way and up here. Here we are. This is the one we missed out. So th these are the Microraptors. So they are down there. We've got uh, three of these guys, four of those guys. And again, they've got a little uh, skeleton in there. You can kind of stand up here and look down on them. Something a little bit sort of different positioning uh, for the, for this exhibit. So, um, oh wow, look at the ceiling there. It's the first time I've seen that. It's from the Trudon enclosure up there. Uh, yeah, so you've got some benches there. We've got a little bit of carpet, make it look quite nice. We've got some flags, a bit, bit of decoration. It's kind of nice. And then, uh, yeah, so that's uh, the small animal house. Um, I really do like this one, where it's all kind of connected. Oh, we've got missed out another. I forgot about this. We have Jaboas in here as well. So there's another house. There's kind of a, a little bit of a maze, this place. And that's what I really like about it. So many little interconnected houses and enclosures and... Um, it looks really nice and it's all kind of connected up. I'm definitely going to be doing something like this again. Um, maybe like with the, when I redo the bug house at some point in the future. Um, I want to kind of connect it all up and have it like this. Uh, but yeah, but that's the small animal house and uh, let's move on. We'll, we'll come down this way. Uh, so there will be a path which connects this area all the way down to the lake, which is here. We're going to have an enclosure sort of built around at this point so there's something else to look at as you go down and this pathway should come all the way around this way and connect up uh, wherever you want to come down over this side I think yeah here we go here here are the steps oh not here I'm going to fall down where do, we, where do we get down here we go yeah so I need to build some kind of steps or ramp or something that we can get up from this point and this leads down into the lake enclosure or my lakeside ones so there's a, a couple of ways you can go you can come down here you can have a look up at the uh, the baryonyx. This is the first exhibit here, and uh, we have over here we have the otters. I can't see the otters from here unless they're swimming around, but they're, they're not at the moment. Um, so we can go along. Let's move. Should we go along here? We'll come along this way. We'll we'll have another look at the. There is another path going along that side of the lake as well. But we'll come here. So we have the otters. You can just about see them on the uh, on the shore there. And uh, that enclosure, we'll have a closer look at them a little bit. And then the baryonyx there, we have the capros there, and on this side the sarcos. And uh, you move along again, we have the frogs at that point, and the diplocalus. You can just about see them. We'll have a closer look. We'll go around the uh, the edge of the shore in a little bit. Uh, the turtles are there. And the beavers, this is where I've moved the beavers to. I can actually, um, there's been an update to one of the Ecos mods. There is now a, lo um, a tree log that lies on its side. That's something I should add into this enclosure. I did have some beaver dams spawned in here, but they don't stay there. They will despawn, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. I can't keep them in there, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, we have a nice big platform right in the centre of the lake here. We can sort of sit here and um, you know, nice flowers, nice fountain at this point here, lovely little fountain. And uh, so there's several ways you can go. Let's go, uh, well, we'll have a look over this way at the uh, the Spinos. So this is a, one of the, the big, a big walkway all the way around here. You've got the Spinos. We'll come over this way. Uh, yeah, see what, we'll come this way. We'll have a closer look at some of the uh, dinos over this way. So you can get pretty up close to these Spinos. Um, very well trained, very well fed. They, they won't eat you too much. Um, as long as you don't, uh, you know, annoy them, they won't eat you. Also, uh, I've actually do have uh, glass walls here, so uh, they're invisible. It's because when I, when I was doing the educational videos on this one, I like to have things wandering around as I'm doing that. But they could actually climb over the, <laughs> these um, these little bridges because they're so big. Um, so I put in glass walls all the way along. This, this whole bridge is basically walled off with glass walls, which are invisible, taking away the barriers of the um, uh, the borders, which you call them, and um, so they can't actually climb over uh, <laughs> the the bridges. Uh, yeah, so we can. Uh, there's another pathway going all the way around here. You can get to the uh, the fountain that way, or carry on over this way. Have a closer look at uh, the beavers here. We've got the the frogs. You can have right up close look. And again, we've got the sarcos. You can walk around up here. We've got a uh, pathway up this way as well. Uh, this does, I suppose technically maybe they shouldn't come this way. No, I think that's fine because you need one. You want to get up here and look at the sarcos. Don't want to wall it off too much. But there's some steps up this point here which we can get up to over this way. And uh, there's a little seating area here. 
where uh, you can actually look out. There's some seats here. You can kind of look out over the lake. There's some more seats down here as well. A nice little uh, area to watch the Sarkos. And we also have uh, mounted Sarko heads as well. Not real Sarkos, again, models, not real. No cruelty here at the zoo, we don't kill, <laughs> we don't kill our zoo uh, animals. And uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Let's quickly run back down. We'll go back to um, the other side so we can have a closer look at uh, the animals on the other side. Um, before I think have you seen everything now? I think that we may well have seen everything. So yeah, you can come up this way. Uh, you can come back down here, have another look. It's another pathway, so it's another way of looking at the, uh, the spinos. And this goes all the way around and actually joins up uh, to the pathway up there. Uh, or you can come this way. Again, we're going to extend this. There's going to be a pathway coming up this way. There's definitely more creatures we need to add down here. There's like Demetrodons, the Hesperonis, the Kairukas are going to come down here as well. There's probably a few others as well. And that's going to meet up with the... We've got over there is the Rhinos and the Mammoths. So there'll be a pathway going up that way. Um, we'll come over this way. There's one last thing to really kind of look at decorative way, what decorative wires. So more pathways, more flowers and things that we put in here. It's another little fountain. You can kind of look here and we've got up here, what we've got up here is some fountains. Just a little decorative thing here really, just to make it look nice. And you can come around here and get a closer look up at the, um, the Diplocalus. You can see there, there they are. And the turtles. So you can really get a, a, get a good look at them. And also there's the capros here, which you can actually come up here. There's a little sort of another seating area up here. So you can kind of sit down and... Yeah, I, I was pretty happy with how these things turned out. And of course you've got the baryonics over there as well. So I think, unless I've forgotten anything, I think I've shown you the entire zoo. So this has been a long old episode. Um, I don't know how many people are left watching. If you're still here at this point... Stick down in the comments and let me know that you actually watched this far and didn't just get bored and click off after 10 minutes or so. Um, I really, really do appreciate that one. So, yeah, and let me know what your favourite enclosure is. Uh, I think for, for the last part, let's just fly up and have a look at the entire thing from the air. So uh, that's going to get demolished and rebuilt. And I think once the zoo is finished, I'm going to be starting um, an underwater uh, start a brand new series now I think I'm gonna I want to carry on on this server and it's going to be basically here I'm going to build a big old entrance to the ocean and everything's going to be built kind of underwater and stuff I haven't really planned it out but I think it's going to be amazing and difficult it's going to be a massive challenge um, but it's going to be, be over there so we'll have a grand entrance for the uh, um, thing, the aquarium so um, who was it um, uh, David I think it was David in the comment section came up with the name I honestly can't remember who it was sorry if, that, if I've got the, the wrong person but someone came up with the the idea of calling it the aquarium uh, which I thought was brilliant um, I said that I think I think I'm going to go with that I was thinking like Shredder Sea World but uh, with the whole kind of ethical things connected to Sea World it's probably maybe not the best thing to do but the aquarium sounds pretty awesome so you'll probably go with that so yeah, anyway, we'll have a fly over the zoo just to finish off. Um, so the uh, this is the lake here. Some of the some of the exhibits here were obviously built before I added in mods, like the baryonyx down the end there. So some of them haven't been fully decorated. Um, but yeah, so then we have the uh, the aviary, the small animal houses over there. So the older exhibits. And I'm gonna yeah, so I'm gonna rebuild the bug house at some point. Um, but yeah, but uh, that's it. So I really do hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know what your favourite enclosure is. Um, is. Is there any here that you're desperate for me to uh, to rebuild? Um, and so again, I don't know whether I will go back and improve all the older ones or whether we'll just move on to the Sea World. And when the Sea World is done, uh, so the Aquarium, when that's done, we'll then start a brand new series on a fresh server and start right from the beginning and I'll have things I want to set these things out better so I might have I like the idea of doing time periods so I'd have like all the Jurassic dinos in one area all the Cretaceous ones in another area that sort of thing and really have it set out properly and also um, I want to be doing the fantasy creatures as well there's no fantasy creatures in, in the zoo here and I'm not going to add the fantasy ones in, in this zoo um, but in the Shredder Zoo Series 2 I think I will add them in but uh, yeah, this is one of my favourite enclosures as well. 
the Deuteranus and the Therizino. Looks uh, looks pretty awesome from there. So yeah, that is it. So thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Come back again tomorrow when we'll be building our next enclosure. There is still plenty more to do at the zoo. And again, we'll do another tour at the end of it. I think, I think this will be it for the tours until it's completed. Well, we'll see how it goes. There's a lot more to do, but I'll do one final tour when this uh, series is completed uh, before moving on to the uh, aquarium. And yeah, so that's it. So yeah, come back tomorrow for more building. And I won't say what it is yet because I haven't actually decided. I think I know what I'm going to do, but uh, we'll wait until tomorrow. So. Oh yeah, I've got monkey house to do as well. I've got monkeys and all sorts. There's so much to do still. So um, I really hope you've enjoyed the series. I'm absolutely loving the series. Um, but yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>